I'm Siddharth from uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory and I'm here to talk about the work that I started before joining JPL um, in India. And for those of you in the audience who are currently involved or plan to do work in different parts of the world where astrobiology has huge potential and significance, hopefully with some of my experience, um, you'll be able to uh, take things forward. So first of all, um, a little bit about myself. So I'm originally from India and before joining JPL, um, uh, I have an engineering background and my current work is actually on Enceladus, on sample collection technologies. But unfortunately today I'm not going to be talking about that. This is primarily going to be focused on that. But just giving a heads up, people can find me after the talk and maybe we can chat. Um, but here, here is why we focused on India. Well, first and foremost, um, as a country, India has one of the largest student populations, as some of you might be aware. Every year we've got several thousands of students graduating in science and engineering. And on a daily basis, we get inquiries about how do you study and how do you work in astrobiology. So there's a huge supply and demand problem and there's little to no formal um, education or you know, career prospects in the country. So that was the first and foremost no brainer reason. Secondly, I would like to really promote the fact that we have an amazing diversity of high value science analogs. And these are places where some of you might actually find some of your work to be super relevant. So with this in mind, these sites are not even on the atlas of astrobiology sites that the community normally works in. And lastly, our National Space Agency, Indian Space Research Organization, is finally reaching a point to, to involve astrobiology as an important science priority for its future missions. It had the uh, Mars Orbiter mission in 2014. Currently, there are, it's under works to work on a surface mission that would work on the progress and the success of the lunar mission that will be launching in a month from now. And finally, there is the uh, Gaganyaan program, which is a human space program, which will have uh, astronauts working in low Earth orbit. So that's with that as the basic motivation of why we decided to do this seven years ago. Um, let me talk quickly about the background in terms of what astrobiology was happening before we kind of stepped in. So the earliest what we could find is between 97 to 2005, ISRO was involved in scientific balloon experiments where they were basically working on um, collecting and understanding uh, microbes in the stratosphere. Um, cut to 2015, where as a grad student, I got an opportunity to go on an, on an astrobiology expedition to New Zealand. And along with a few other Indian and Indian origin um, researchers, we decided to bring the program to India. And that's what we did. As part of the um, um, NASA Space Outbound India expedition, that was the first time that a dedicated astrobiology expedition was taking place, gathering and bringing together researchers in the country. And that's where ball just really started rolling. The momentum started building up. And let me tell you something that working and socializing with people in uncomfortable, dry desert environments is way better than inside an air-conditioned classroom with experience. So, some of the things that led from that was the establishment of a center of excellence in astrobiology at Amity University, Mumbai, which was the first dedicated center that I was a uh, part of leading. And also as part of Blue Marble Space, the organization that I had been affiliated with, uh, the Astrobiology India group has been active since then, working to promote uh, coordination activities between uh, domestic researchers in the country. So we've been having national level meetings and discussions. And what we want to do from here is move forward towards setting up a national astrobiology program closely in support with the Indian government. I don't have enough time, but I'll try to do justice to this slide. Um, our efforts at the center focused on three main verticals. Um, the microgravity research, we built plant-based uh, plant growth observation experiments for ISRO. Uh, we worked on characterizing some of the sites in Ladakh, which is an early Mars analog and hardware testing for rovers. And um, in collaboration with UC Berkeley, the Berkeley SETI Research Center, uh, we had four research fellows who were working to use um, radio telescope data from a GMRT, which is a array facility there, uh, to set up a SETI pipeline. And our research work has culminated into the university finally agreeing to have a master's program that is dedicated for astrobiology and science students. So hopefully this year onwards, we'll have students in India who will have that opportunity to study there. Um, Blue Marble Space has been a great source of information and uh, help and network. So those of you who are not affiliated, I would say strongly recommend it. Do consider it. Quickly talking about some of the unique aspects of astrobiology in India. Um, I've just highlighted some of the main sites here in Ladakh uh, up north, which is a high altitude cold dry desert environment. Kutch, which is one of the largest salt flats in the world. 
the only accessible basalt impact crater in Lonar, uh, the basalt traps in limestone caves, and there are several others. And because we don't have a National Astrobiology Institute yet, um, there have been institutions that have been mushrooming over the last uh, few decades. And I've been uh, very successful and, and fortunate to be part of several senior earth scientists to work towards setting this up. And it's only because of these people uh, who you're seeing on the screen over here that we're able to do this. Uh, and we've been working through the pandemic to make this happen. There have been a working group, uh, several working groups that have been put in place. Uh, we've been closely following uh, work done in Europe and at, uh, in the United States through the NASA Astrobiology Institute to help form these working groups. And these are just some names and some areas where you know, people have been working. And uh, too much information, bad slide, I know, but I just wanted to tell you that there are these sites and we have been trying to map out the science objectives, the different technologies, what worlds are they analog to and what kind of missions uh, would they be able to support into the future. Um, some other ways in which we have been contributing, uh, we published our first advocacy paper in New Space Journal uh, talking about the importance of astrobiology for India. And internally, we have been um, contributing to the science roadmap for uh, ISRO as well. Now, three main wins for us. Um, one is the fact that we've got several students who have gone through our uh, system. And these are the people who in the future will be taking light forward. This year, ISRO published its space policy document, and we were very happy to see that they have acknowledged the importance of ISRO biology because they've mentioned that they will be looking into extraterrestrial habitability. So for us as a country, this is a huge win that finally ISRO has acknowledged us. And the fact that um, there is now comprehensive, uh, I would say not enough, but still uh, comprehensive diversification of funding for scientists in the country to do this, but definitely more work needs to be done and more funding needs to be put together. So my last slide, um, to, to summarize some of these things, if you're in your region or country interested in setting things up, the first and foremost step is to bring early and mid-career people together and encourage conversations to take place uh, at a domestic level, at the same time leveraging international work. And like I said, field workshops are amazing for team building. Finding an important university or a host institution is critical because if you're doing events, logistically speaking, it's important to find an organization that will support you and beware of non-scientific and exploitive groups in the, in, the, in the region. Finally, convene workshops, identify research interests, try to tie all of them together into overarching themes and help the group formalize themselves in the form of a virtual network, a nonprofit or a society. And finally, encourage the group members to work closely with their government for their astrobiology goals. So that's my time and I um, hope you can find me and those of you who are interested can talk more on this. Thank you. <laughs>